What's up guys, this is Matt, and today I'm going to be playing a game called Democracy 2. Now this is a game I picked up on Steam about a week ago, and I've been, you know, playing it for a while, and I've been watching people uh, play it on YouTube actually for quite a while, so I thought it was about time that I gave it a try myself. Now I'm not an expert at this game at all, but I thought maybe you guys would like to watch it. I, I know the, the basic gist of the game, so I thought you guys might enjoy uh, a kind of playthrough tutorial type thing uh, and watch me learn how to play this at the same time. So, um, the first thing I do want to point out, this is a, a political game. If you have a problem um, with differing political opinions, this game might not be for you. But I will say, I think it's a great government simulator. Um, it really shows how everything in government, all government policy works together. Now that being said, the point of the game is of course to try to fix the problems by implementing policy. So um, a liberal or, or in the US a democratic, or sorry a democrat, you know like the, the party, um, that might be a little bit more along the lines of what this game is looking for only because in the sense of a conservative, you're not going to just dismantle the government and let it do its own thing. That, that really wouldn't make for a good game. So you have to understand that um, a liberal philosophy is really just going to lend itself better to gameplay. Um, anyway, let me get into this. We're going to go ahead and hit uh, New Game. Um, you can hit How to Play. It's kind of a tutorial. I took notes during the tutorial, and I'll give you a quick um, verbal verbalization of that. But... um. Right here, you can see that we could choose a couple different countries, and they're all different scenarios. Um, Malaganga is a debt-ridden state where voting is compulsory, so every single person will be voting in that country. And it goes down the line, all different types. Uh, you got uh, whatever this is, Gaia Topa is an eco-aware state. And, of course, you do have the USA. Um, I think maybe what we'll do, let's try this debt-ridden state where voting is compulsory. So Mala, Malaganga... I, I, yeah, I guess that's how we'll pronounce it. So we'll go ahead and select that, and you can choose your party. I'm just going to leave it where it is. So we will be the popular front, and the opposition party will be the Democrats. We will have a four-year term limit, and we do have a maximum of three terms in office. Now, you can change any of this as you wish, as well as changing the currency from the dollar to the pound to the euro. Um, they... These are some more advanced settings. The game suggests that you don't change those until you understand the game a little bit better. They say to just try their default settings at first. So, uh, we're three minutes in. Let's just jump right into this, and I'll explain the game once we're at the main screen. Let's go ahead and click start. Let it load itself up. Politics is when you say you are going to do one thing while intending to do another. Then you do neither what you said nor what you intended. Apparently, that is a quote by Saddam Hussein. All right, let's click to continue. All right, congratulations on your victory. Welcome, Prime Minister, and congratulations on being elected to the highest office in Malaganga. I am sorry to say that the country has a number of urgent problems that you will need to attend to. Regrettably, we have both a large national debt and a government deficit. There is also a small matter of the contagious disease that is burdening our hospitals, the vigilante mobs running wild in the streets, and the inefficiency of our industry. As a reminder, you should know that voting is compulsory here in Malaganga, so we should not be too concerned about election turnout. And right here it's showing us a couple of the current, or actually all of the, the current situations in our country, red meaning uh, very bad for us. So we have a problem with pollution, uh, with street gangs, our country is a technology backwater, which would be the opposite of being like techno uh, technologically superior. Let's see what else. We have inner city riots, we have binge drinking, vigilante mobs, contagious disease, an asthma epidemic, hospital overcrowding, and we have a problem with homelessness. So this is going to be a tough, this, this might be a very tough scenario to play through. But let's try it. So begin term in office. And this is the game screen. This is how you will be playing the whole game. Now, it might look uh, a little strange at first. It might look stupid. I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and explain it to you. And really, right off the bat, you'll be able to tell if this is a game for you. Because when I get done explaining this, you should be, un be able to understand what's going on. So the first thing I want to point out, if you look at 
um, you'll see these lines. The whole screen is split up into seven sections, and each section is representing a different area of government policy. So starting from the top here, we have foreign affairs, then we have welfare, the economy, taxes, public service, law and order, and transportation. So those are the seven areas that this game is going to be dealing with as far as government policy. Now, in the center, you'll see 21 groups of voters, from socialists to capitalists to retired, and some of these groups will overlap. You could have someone who's retired and poor, or you could have a liberal that drives a car, they're a motorist. So this is showing the entire population of your country and the different groups of voters, because certain policies will um, anger or they will, what's the word, um, make some of these groups happy. So the next thing I'm going to point out are these blue circles. Okay, the blue circles are what you can call just the, the hard facts or the stats of your country. Okay, so for instance, we can go up here to our foreign affairs section and this first one here is what foreign relations and you'll see how everything else in the screen blacks out and it just shows us what is related to foreign relations. So we have the black circle foreign aid, then we have racial tension, international trade and CO2 emissions, which those are all just hard facts. We can't affect those. Um, directly. And you'll also notice that that blue circle kind of fills in yellow. That means that we're uh, right around the middle, whereas racial tensions are green, um, I believe meaning high. Let's see here. The degree to which different between nationalities and cultures. Yeah, this actually, this might be high, and you don't want everything to be to be going up, obviously. You don't want homelessness to be going up, you want it to be going down. You see unemployment Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so that was the blue icons. Going on to the red icons, those are the bad situations. Um, actually, they're all the situations that we read out at the beginning of the game. For instance, down here in the, where are we, public service area, this is contagious diseases. So you, we can mouse over this. That's all you got to do. You don't have to click anything. You just hover over it. Everything on the screen turns black, and all we see is what is affecting it. Now, there's lines coming in, there's lines going out, and they're different colors. So this is, this is what you need to understand. Red means that it's bringing something down. Not necessarily bad, it's just lowering the number. So, in, and actually, in the case of contagious diseases, we want red lines going into contagious disease because we want it to be coming down. And you can tell the direction that the line is moving. So, for, for, so in this scenario, we have poverty up in the right-hand side. And that's a green line going into contagious disease, meaning that our current poverty level is bringing contagious disease up. Now there's some red lines going into it down here, state health service. That means that right now our state health service is bringing contagious disease down, but very slightly and apparently not enough. Also, the contagious disease, oh, it actually, it looks like lifespan. I can't tell what direction that line is moving. Um, I would I would imagine that the contagious disease is lowering lifespan. Also, contagious disease is lowering everyone's opinion on the government, and it is lowering our country's productivity. So that's just a quick rundown of what you'll see as far as red icons. Now, the black icons, and we can, I guess, for instance, look at a gas tax or a petrol tax. The black icons are policy. These are things that we can directly control. And you'll see that they also have effects on other things in our country. For instance, the petrol tax is having a negative effect on our GDP. It's also having a negative effect or a negative effect on the middle the middle earnings or like a middle income earnings. It is making environmentalists happy, but it's bringing down the happiness of motor of motorists and it's lowering our country's car usage. Now, any of these things you can click on. So we can start uh, back at the top with the blue, and I believe foreign relations was the example we used there. So if I click on foreign relations, it'll bring up a graph. And this basically shows us exactly what the lines were showing us on the main game screen. So these are things that are influencing our current foreign relations. So our foreign aid policy is bringing down our foreign relations, 
and our current CO2 emissions are bringing down foreign relations. Now, this is what foreign relations is affecting. So it's actually having a positive effect on international trade and racial tensions, but it's bringing and, and it's lowering terrorism. So actually, it's, it's all good things. All right, let's go ahead and back out of that. The next one was the red, and of course, uh, we used contagious disease, and you can go ahead and click on a red one, and they'll so show some hints. And uh, as far as the, the situations, so for instance, the contagious disease, the green would be our value, and of course, since we haven't uh, played yet, it's not going up and down, but eventually this line will be moving. We have a stop trigger and a start trigger. Right now, because we have contagious disease, this green line is up here over the start trigger. So not only do we need to make this go down, we need to make it go below this stop trigger. Right now, poverty, or our country's uh, poverty level, is bringing up our contagious disease. The state health service is bringing it down, but not enough to counterbalance the rays from, poly from uh, poverty. And it is having effects on other things. It is having effects on productivity, everyone, and our country's lifespan. So I hope you guys are maybe kind of getting, um, kind of getting acquainted with this game screen. There's a lot going on, but I think it's it's actually not that hard to understand. Um, the black icons we used petrol tax as an example. So if I go ahead and click on petrol tax, we can now see the effect that it's having on everyone. And right here with this slider, we can adjust our government policy. So right now we're spending $4.37 billion per turn on, or sorry, we are earning, I, I take that back. We are earning $4.37 billion per turn from petrol tax. So if we move this slider to the left, you'll see that we are lowering our earnings, but we are also affecting this graph. We are, um, having less of a neg negative effect on motorists. We're having less of a negative effect on car usage and middle earnings, but we're also uh, not making, we're not pleasing the environmentalists as much until eventually you see if we lower it all the way, uh, we're, we're really having no effect on anybody. And we're only earning 3.12, or sorry, 312.71 million per turn. Now, on top of just changing policy, you have to have political capital to make anything happen. You start the game with 21 and you earn political capital every turn. Now, policies are going to cost different amounts to lower them or to raise them. For instance, it's very easy for a government to lower a tax. That's why it doesn't cost us as much to lower this. But it'd be very hard to get anyone to go along with the tax raise. That's why it's, it would cost 41 political capital just to be able to raise this tax not to mention it would piss everybody off so in this case I mean I'm not gonna mess with petrol tax right now it was just something I want to show you and you have the option uh, when you pick something that you want you can press X if it was something that you're allowed to do it'll ask you to confirm it otherwise it's just gonna tell you sorry you don't have enough political capital um, or sufficient control over the government is what it's telling you here but so anyway was there anything else I wanted to show you or wanted to explain to you? Um, no. Oh, the only thing, each turn represents three months. So keep that in mind as we're playing. So that was all the notes I took on my little piece of paper. So let's go ahead and see if we can't tackle anything. And we were already messing around with contagious disease a little bit. Is that something that we can affect? Let's, oh, let's see. Our GDP is way down. What is that affecting? It's bringing down our unemployment. The productivity is having an effect on it. The air quality. All right. What could we do here? The technology backwater looks like it's really having the biggest effect on our GDP. So where is that? Right here. Our literacy rate, our science funding, university grants. So our levels of all those are what's really bringing this down. And the fact that um, we teach creationism looks like it's bringing up the technology backwater a little bit. And stem cell research, we, which we are not funding at the moment, is having no effect. But if we were, that would be having a problem as well. So what can we do? Or 
having also a problem with hospital overcrowding. How much does this cost? All right, state health service. It would cost us 20 political capital, which we only have 21 uh, in this particular turn. It would also take 36 months to be implemented. So if we were to start to raise... Okay. So as you see, the more we spend on the state health service, the it's going to actually lower our contagious disease, and it's going to lower the hospital overcrowding. It's going to make the poor happier, the socialists, it's going to bring up the lifespan, and it's going to make the retired people happier. And have a negative, negative effect on unemployment. So really, it's a good thing, but you see, it's not going to be earning us anything. It's going to be costing us quite a bit of money per turn, and we want to try to keep our... And you see, no, we want to cancel. We don't want to spend that yet. We want to try to keep everything balanced. Right now, we have an income of $34.82 billion. We have a debt of 88. I guess we haven't spent anything yet. That's not bad. Okay. What are some other problems maybe we could tackle first? The crime level. Street gangs, poverty. Let's see. Let's, you know what? It's going to be expensive, but let's bump up our state health service just a little bit. We can go right now. We're paying for all major operations, uh, serious, serious illness only, some prevention, or excellent health provision. And that's very expensive. Now, it's, it's going to cost the same amount of capital, so it's just how much, what, what dollar amount do we want to be uh, paying for per turn? So maybe we can bring this up to right about the serious serious illness only, but very expensive. Actually, we'll bump it up one more right past that. Some prevention, 11.75 billion per turn. I think it's going to be worth it. It's going to take quite a while to go into effect, so we're not going to see anything yet. But hopefully that will uh, get us where we want to be. So I'll go ahead and X out of the screen up here at the top right. And it says, are you sure you want to make this change? This will use up some of your political capital for this turn. You currently have 21, and this action will use up 20. More points are earned each turn depending on your electoral, uh, electoral majority. So uh, we could go ahead and hit OK. So you see now that we have one political capital left for this turn, so we really can't do anything else. Um, there are additional icons up here and I will probably be explaining those later but not right now for now let's just go ahead and we'll go right on to our next turn so we could hit uh, this little arrow where it looks like the hotkey F6 and we'll say next turn it'll load a little bit click continue all right quarterly report our economic forecast good news the global economy is doing well and this is having a positive effect on our GDP which is not good because our GDP is very low anyway, so it's really not helping us. All right, our budget report: the government is currently running a budget deficit of 9.47 or 45 billion. So we should take steps to reduce this. We're probably going to have to raise taxes uh, or lower one of our policies to try to uh, balance, at least balance the budget. We don't want to be spending that much money. Uh, poll, uh, polls report: the government is not popular among its citizens. Only 14 percent in 10 to vote for us. Our election report, it's not for a long time, but right now our membership is 842,358, and that is a lot less than the opposition party. And our security briefing, intelligence services have nothing of consequence to report at this time. So it's telling, let's see, wasteful economy, why? Our productivity is lower, workers are less efficient and less motivated than those in other nations. This is going to reduce our overall wealth and international competitiveness. And you see we just bumped over that start trigger there. So what is causing it? Our labor laws, our maternity leave policy, and our unemployment benefits are all bringing that up. And it's having a negative effect on our GDP. Also, it looks like we have to appoint a UN ambassador. So. Our ambassador to the UN retires this year, and we need to name a successor as soon as possible. Much will be made of whether we appoint a hardliner who sticks up for the country, or someone more able to compromise. So we have two options. We have, a, we have Lucille, 
Um, Lucille is well known as a patriot who will fight tooth and claw to get our interests represented at the UN. Seen as a popular choice amongst uh, patriotic and more conservative citizens, she is historically against foreign aid and a supporter of import tariffs. She is not popular internationally. Or we could appoint Alfred. Alfred is a popular figure on the international stage with a reputation for solving difficult problems through compromise and understanding. A true internationalist, he is popular with the, with the liberals and socialists in our society, as well as foreign leaders. So, who do we want to appoint? Um, I'm thinking we're gonna need help. We're gonna, we don't want to piss off the rest of the world. I think that Alfred sounds like the middle of the road choice. In my opinion, this is a, a hard right versus a middle. I don't see this as a left. Or, I, you know, that probably, that could just be because of how far right this person is. So let's go ahead. We're going to appoint Alfred. And we can now close out of this quarterly report. And we can see what kind of damage was done. Still a very popular among socialists, state employees, uh, computer, I guess, users. We can say computers. Oh, no, commuters. Wow. Why am I saying computer? What is? It, what did it say on that screen? Oh, it did say commuter. Okay. There are people who travel uh, to work each day. So we actually were popular among commuters. I don't know why. And drinkers. Why are we popular among drinkers? I don't know. That's a good question. Oh, our, our public service minister is uh, very sympathetic to drinkers, so that looks like that's where we're getting some of our popularity. What is his name? Jeffrey Butler. He's our public service minister. We can change our ministers. I'm not going to mess with that right now because that I don't quite understand that screen, so I'll wait till later uh, until I mess with that at all. Now, what can we do here? Our GDP is still very, very low. It looks like our corporation tax is bringing it down a little bit. Right now, the corporation tax is unfair. And this is how much we're bringing in. So if we lower the corporation tax, which we're already running out of deficit, so we don't want to be making less money. So if we do this, we're going to have to raise tax in another area. Um, but it would also it would also make a lot of other voters happy it would, it would bring up capitalists and the wealthy and the self-employed oh my goodness this is a lot um, what do we want to do if I bring it all the way down it's still not going to have a positive effect on our GDP so let's leave that for a second let's look at maybe some of the other taxes what is this? Income tax? If we raise the income tax... Wow! You notice how the, the wealthy don't get pissed off until right here, and then they just shoot up past everybody. They take it very, uh, very seriously. The middle income are just, they get pissed off all the time. What else do we have? Equality is coming up in the socialists are happier. Anyway, we can't raise it. We can lower it. Which I don't feel like doing. What else? Smokers tax. A car tax. No, we don't want to piss them off yet. Smoker tax. Alright, we could raise our country's lifespan. Yeah, but we're, we're also raising poverty if we charge more for the tobacco tax. Uh, this is tough. All right, the last one, sales tax. That's how much we're making right now. The more we raise it, the more the higher we're, we are raising our poverty level in this country. So I think we're just going to have to spend money. I know we're at a deficit right now, but it looks like it's going to be very tough to to even this out. All right, vigilante mobs. Let's let's see what we could do with our police force. Let's maybe we'll spend some more on police force. So the more we spend on police force, we're actually bringing down the binge drinking. We are making vigilante mobs less, and we're lowering crime and everything else. And we're making conservatives happy. 
We're, okay, this is actually everything that we want to do. And it's cheap to raise it. So I'm actually going to go to the maximum. It's only three, 3 billion extra per turn. And it's only going to take nine months to be implemented. I think this might be a good idea. I could be wrong, but let's try it. So it's going to cost us... 14 political capital when we have 22. So that doesn't sound like a problem. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And we still have 8 capital. I don't know what we can spend. I know everything's pretty expensive. Yeah, that narcotics is 31. What about our community policing? Oh, that's pretty low. What could we do here? If we raise the community policing. We're also lowering street gang crime, violent crime, and binge drinking. And we're having a positive effect on our liberal voters. So let's go ahead and max that out too. It's only going to cost us one political capital. We're going to hit OK. And we're down to seven. I think that's enough. Let's go ahead and go on to the next turn. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the arrow. Let it load. OK. Our, qu our quarterly report, the economy is still doing well. Um, we're still running a budget deficit. Our approval rating is still very disappointing. Um, we would only get about 20% of the vote, but it, I think that's coming up. I think we only had 14 on the last turn. We still have less than the opposition. And our intelligence services still have nothing to report. But we do have, um, I guess a situation. I wouldn't call it a situation. Okay, a policy dilemma. Freedom of information. There have been calls for a law to increase the availability of information held on databases about citizens without their knowledge. These include the records held by private medical companies, insurance companies, and debt collection agencies, as well as information held by government departments. So we have two options, to reject or propose. We can reject the proposal. Nobody likes the idea of the government holding information about them, but in some circumstances, this needs to be done. The government isn't out to spy on everyone, but passing this law will just make it harder for the intelligence services to keep a watch on serious criminals and terrorists. It will also affect a large number of businesses who have customer databases who will be swamped with yet more bureaucracy. Or we can propose the Freedom Act. It's essential that we have this law passed as it is one of the checks and balances required in any truly free society. The average law-abiding citizen should not be spied on or monitored by multinational corporations with computer databases, and the potential for abuse by government agencies if the citizen cannot view the data is, or sorry, cannot view what data is being stored is huge. So the Freedom Act, I guess, is getting rid of it, or we can reject the proposal and keep it in place. So I guess this is already in place. That's what I'm understanding from from reading this. And let's just stick with the liberal slant, I think. I don't know which way I want to go. Uh, my goodness. Let's say no. Let's say we don't want it. We're going to... Yeah, okay. Go ahead and close out of that. We are, we're up to 28, and nothing I don't think has gone into effect yet because that was only a three-month span of time. Let's see what are these. We maybe could bring one of those up. Are those affecting the GDP? Immigration. It looks like they're affecting each other. Um, immigration is having a slightly positive effect on the GDP. What can we do to bring up immigration? Border control. What do we have here? Biometric checks. All right, so the more that we have at the border, the less the people can come in. So what if we lower it? Let's see what we have. We could have passport checks. Random passport checks. No, we want passport checks. We don't need biometric checks. So it's going to lower our stance with the Patriots, but it's also going to increase our stance with liberals a little bit. And it actually... I don't understand why... Oh, no. All right, so it's also going to have a positive effect on... Not a positive, it's going to raise terrorism, which is it's not raising it significantly, so I think we're going to be safe. Let's bring it down here to passport checks. Um, yeah, let's bring it right about here. And it's going to cost us 21, so this is going to be our whole turn. All right, we're going to hit OK. And now hopefully... 
that'll bump up our immigration even more, which does have an effect on the GDP. Current, okay. Go ahead and exit out, and we're gonna skip another turn, because I don't think, I don't know what else we could afford with just seven political capital. Um, now only nine to raise this one. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and skip the turn again. All right. Oh, we have a legal scandal, and we have something going on with, with uh, children's food. So the economy is still doing well. We're running a higher deficit. Still have about 20% of the of the vote. Yeah, okay, everything's the same. Let's look at this legal scandal. Oh, and there's a hint. Let's, I'm going to read this real quick. Uh, this is an event that has occurred in your country. It could be happening randomly, or more likely, it has been triggered by a set of circumstances under your control. Some events are good. Or sorry, some, some events are good news, and some are bad, and their effects may be long or short-lived. You will have no warning as to what events may be triggered by your actions, so weigh up the possible effects of your policy choices. Care. Okay, so we have a legal scandal. Confidence in our legal system has dropped through the floor after investigative journalists have discovered a number of serious miscarriages of justice, including people found guilty of murder despite minimal evidence. There is outrage amongst liberals who blame the government for completely inadequate provision of, le of legal safeguards to ensure the rights of the accused. I don't think we did anything for that, did we? Okay, and children's food. Uh, law has been proposed to regulate the fat content and nutritional value of food so sold to children, including food sold in fast food restaurants and, of course, food served in schools. This is likely to incur costs for the food retailers. We can leave the law unchanged. You cannot interfere with the free market. This is the state interfering in people's lives. If kids want to eat fatty junk food and the parents do not mind, then who are politicians to tell people not to eat hamburgers? Or we can regulate children's food. Obesity is a major problem, which has a severe effect on people's health. Uh, marketing unhealthy foods to people at such an early age is unacceptable, and we should pass the law now to safeguard the future health of our citizens. Let's take the clearly liberal approach, and we'll regulate the children's food, and we'll see how that turns out for our government. Now, you can see that we're running a deficit, our expenses are much lower than our income, or higher than our income, and I think I'm going to leave the game here. Let me know if you thought that that was interesting at all. I'm having fun playing it, but if nobody wants to watch it, then I don't need to record it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and flip the screen. I want you guys to go ahead and leave a comment, and then please, if you haven't already subscribed, go check out my channel and my website, and here are a couple videos you may have missed. Um, please don't forget to leave a comment, and let me know what you think. Uh, this is Matt, and until next time.